Hey guys, I'm back with another video and today we have our Pink Fiddle Tea Cake haul. Of course, we have the new version. There she is right there. Um, and all the other new fragrances from that collection for a semi-annual sale, which is June 13th. I also have all the blends collection candles as well. That's for semi-annual sale. What's blends again, it's supposed to be June 13th. So I wouldn't expect to go into your store and find these out on the floor. But if you have a very generous and kind candle angel like I do, thank you so much. You know who you are. Uh, then you might be able to get them early. So I was able to snag all the new blends and all the new SAS candles and we'll get right into it. So yes, um, I th think these are the candles that are being poured for sale. Uh, there's also, I think, another collection of like a wallpaper wraparound of just like black cherry Merlot and cactus blossom, like boring stuff that nobody cares about. Uh, but then we finally do have some newness. I love when they actually give us like new stuff for SAS because that's technically another like summer two floor set. Uh, so it's like we want new products even though they will be clearancing out all the old stuff. It's kind of like if I really wanted it, I would have already gotten it at that point. So I kind of really don't care for SAS unless there's newness to be had, but there is, and they throw us a bow and actually give us pink petal tea cake, which I did a whole video on the history of that if you want to watch that uh, on my channel a few videos back. Uh, and without further ado, let me get into it. So yeah, um, last night I got a text saying that the candles were in and it was like, was it 6 p.m. or like 5.30 or something and I was like, oh my gosh, but the drive is a few hours away to the uh, Candle Angel store and I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll do anything to get my pink petal tea cake. So I did drive back there. I finally got back home and it was pretty late, uh, but we are here in the next day and I finally am refreshed and have smelled all the candles. So here we are. So I did get three pink petal tea cake. Honestly, I have a crap load of pink petal tea cake, probably like a lifetime, not a lifetime supply, but enough for me to have for like the foreseeable future. Of all the other variations, I have the OG one. I have the, a ton of the soft ones. I have quite a few of the cute Sweet Shop 2.0 version. I have the online exclusive Candle Day one as well. So like, honestly don't really need too many pink petal tea cakes. So I only have like three of them. Uh, one is actually for a friend and then two for myself. Just one to burn and then one to keep in the pink petal tea cake like archives, so to speak. Uh, so I didn't like go crazy with it, but you know, these are still gonna be out for SAS. So if I wanna buy more, then I will do it then. Uh, but if you are interested in pink petal tea cake, make sure you're doing SAS and it's also kind of like, I don't want to encourage people to like hoard or overbuy, but at least like vote with your wallet in the sense that like if we buy pink petal tea cake, then we're at least sending Bath and Body Works a signal that we want like, you know, fragrances out of the vault that like the candle community really wants, but maybe the mass you know, a mass wide appeal public doesn't like. Uh, you know, at least it's like a vote for like, you know, I gotta buy my pink petal tea cake. So I send a message to Bath and Body Works that we want either like, you know, new, unique, juicy fragrances or stuff from the vault that uh, is like kind of unique and maybe didn't sell as well as like a champagne toast or strawberry pound cake, but like still please release it for the candle community. So yes, I still, you know, obviously bought the ones that I had. Uh, so here she is. Uh, that's what that looks like. I actually really like the packaging on this collection. I know it's been, uh, I mean, with any design thing, it's always subjective. Uh, but I, I don't know. I just like the really cute, whimsical, um, drawings or illustrations. Uh, it's just like very, like, just BBW with, like, the colored wax and the galvanized lid. I'm, like, totally here for it. And as a plus, it's $24.50, so if they do, like, a 10 off sale or whatever, it is the cheaper one. Uh, so this pink rose petals, pound cake, and vanilla glaze. This one has the core wicks, but it's like some of the bigger core wicks. Uh, so they do make massive mushroom tops. I've actually already burned this one just this morning. Um, that's what that looks like right there. Um, I think the version that we had previous was the thick rope-like wick. So it does have a slightly different burn on it, but it burned viciously and it was like quite a strong throw. It was probably like the strongest of the ones that I have, but mainly probably because it's the most newest as well as the most freshest. Uh, but it still just as, smells just as amazing as it ever, ever has before. Uh, you get that beautiful like strawberry vanilla cake fragrance mixed with a like very powdery, just powder puff slight hint of like a rose petal undertone to it and it's delicious. I did a whole video on it. We already know what pink petal tea cake smells like so I don't have to really go into it but amazing, awesome floral bakery fragrance. Just like super feminine, cute and fun. Just very pink and I love it. So pink petal tea cake right there. Um, it smells, yeah, it smells just like it has before. When I was burning, I want to say maybe it was a tad bit sweeter and a little bit more cakey than it has been in previous uh, years. It could just be because the oils are fresh and it's a freshly poured candle. So maybe just like, you know, just the slight variations that come from the generational changes of each candle that comes out each year. Uh, but it did seem a little bit sweeter. I didn't mind that. It just seemed really fresh and juicy and awesome. And it filled my 
bedroom, no problem. I think it was definitely so like stronger than the soft version that I had from that one candle day. Uh, so good to go there. I had no issues with the performance, but obviously this was just a first burn. So we don't know if it's gonna dead out mid-range or not, but there it was. Uh, so we're good to go there. So excited to have that again. Honestly, probably not as excited as most people might think I might be just because I have so many pink petal tea gig. I already know what it smells like, you know? Honestly, get more excited for the genuinely new fragrances and new and unique fragrances, but girl not complaining that pink petal tea gig is back and like everyone gets to enjoy it finally. So snack that, snack that up if you enjoy it. Uh, the next one we have that I was really excited for is Toasted Pineapple Marshmallow right here. And just super cute drawing on that. It's like a pineapple guitar with like a, like, you know, marshmallows over a, you know, bonfire. So cute. Uh, this is fresh pineapple, milk chocolate, toasty marshmallows, and graham cracker. This one has the thinner core wicks on it. And that's what that looks like right there. Um, honestly, a little underwhelmed, to be honest. I was hoping for a little bit more chocolate, marshmallow, and graham cracker. But it's just really heaps of pineapple. And that's pretty much it. It's that usual very artificial pineapples that you get in like pineapple cream puff. Um, what are all the other pineapples? Like golden pineapple luau that was out that one year. Pineapple sunrise, that uh, tropical island colada that was just out. It's that usual generic BBW like kind of synthetic pineapple. Uh, but it exists um, and it has a slight graham crackery undertone. The chocolate is not very strong and nor is the marshmallow. It just comes off as just another generic pineapple fragrance. I feel like maybe I'm gonna have to burn this one to see if it actually gets all the other notes in there because a little underwhelming. It's like a slightly just creamy, uh, like slightly crusty pineapple, but I'm not even really picking up a whole lot on this. It's not pineapple crumb cake, which was really delicious. That had that awesome like crumb streusel topping with a little bit of cinnamon on it that just had like an awesome like bakery aspect to it. Uh, pineapple cream puff is a little bit even more like vanilla, play-doh, plasticky than even this is. It just smells like another pineapple fragrance. I think I really have to burn this one, but it's not like, oh my God, wow, at least on cold, but I'm really hoping the toasted marshmallow aspect comes out when you go to burn it. Uh, so I just got one of those and that's what that looks like right there. The next one we have is Hot Fudge Drizzle. Super cute. It's like peaks of like waffle cones with like chocolate drizzle on top of it. Oh my God, I love that. Uh, this is rich melted chocolate, vanilla bean, and dash of brown sugar. Uh, this one also has the thin core wicks on it and a blue wax on there. This is just Hot Fudge Sunday, which was also chocolate lava cake. I don't pick up any difference. It's just that very hot piping chocolate fudge drizzle syrup on an ice cream sundae fragrance that we had from Hot Fudge Sunday, uh, which is also the very same chocolate that shows up in the current chocolate chip cookie. The same chocolate that's in peppermint hot chocolate, which is a repackage. Well, it's not a repackage, but a very close sibling to chocolate peppermint cream. Same hot fudge drizzling, like piping hot, liquidy hot fudge syrup fragrance. And that's all there is to it. Uh, there is definitely a little bit of brown sugar and vanilla bean in there, but yeah. Um, I don't think this one's new. I'll have to burn it, but it just pretty much just smells like chocolate lava cake slash hot fudge sundae. So that was hot fudge drizzle right there. Not much to talk about there. Uh, when you compare it to chocolate chip cookie, which is out right now, this one definitely has way more of a bakery fragrance. This one has chocolate in it and it's a similar chocolate, but this one has so much more of that like caramel, molasses, brown sugar, and like graham crackery like cookie undertone to it that hot fudge drizzle does not like hot fudge drizzle is balls to the walls chocolate whereas this one has a prominent bakery note so there is definitely a difference between the two there uh and then moving on we have sunny tropical mango and that's what that looks like right there and that's super cute too uh this one is tropical sugar mango sunny pink pineapple and ripe nectarine I think this one originally was called Ice Tropical Refresher, which was what on the sheets that uh, Life Inside the Page posted on her blog. So this one had a different fragrance originally, a fragrance name to it. Uh, but then they switched it to Sunny Tropical Mango, uh, which is interesting how they like, what well, the thought process is behind why they name it that way. I would assume maybe like Sunny Red Mango maybe did really exceptionally well. So they're like, okay, maybe let's try making it Sunny Tropical Mango because mango seems to be a popular fragrance. Whereas the Tropical Refresher ones maybe a little bit more vague. So they wanted to capture the mango market versus the vague tropical refresher market. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, but I thought this was just gonna be a Sunny Red Mango or whatever it is that's out right now. I don't think it is, even though I never burned that one. This one's like really heavy on like a grapefruit citrus fragrance that I actually really don't mind. Um, nectarine, pineapple, and mango. I mean, you get mango in there, it's that super like overripe, like almost like tomato-y, like gooey uh, tropical fruit fragrance that we get in a lot of their mango ones. Uh, but I feel like there's just heaps of 
a grapefruit in there. And I think Sense Galore had a story on her Instagram that says it was very similar to Pomelo Grapefruit. And I totally agree. It's very similar to that Pomelo Grapefruit fragrance. We also had a Golden Grapefruit that one year from that White Barn uh, Core collection. Uh, very much like a grapefruit fragrance to it for sure, which I actually really enjoy a lot more than I thought I would. I was actually not gonna pick this one up. I have two of these because a friend requested one uh, and I wasn't even gonna pick this one up, but I smelled it and I was like, this is actually not bad. It's a little bit more than just your usual like mango Mai Tai, run of the mill mango fragrance. There's definitely a heavy citrus grapefruit fragrance and it smells like a grapefruit like cocktail and I don't totally mind that. So yeah, um, it's not one that I need to hoard or one that I'm like super excited about. I just really don't care for tropical fruit fragrances a whole lot, but unique enough. And it kind of reminds me of just like an OG, like BBW tropical fragrances. Also very similar to Guava Sunset from Homeworks if you enjoy that one. This one has a very similar fragrance to it. So yeah, um, don't mind that one. So we'll see how that one goes. It's probably not gonna be like a favorite. I just hope it doesn't smell like kerosene when you go to burn it. And then the other one is pink lemonade from that collection, which is out right now, so we so don't need that. Um, and I believe that is the big fun uh, bought for sale collection for semi-annual sale. Uh, and then let's move on to the blends, which I'm actually probably a little bit more excited about just because they're like so out there and fun. I'm just like, this is such a cool concept. I remember when I first like saw one of the first product photos for it and I was like, oh my God, like what else could we potentially have? I think the first photo we saw was this. And I was like, there's so much stuff that they can like blend that would be really awesome. I would really love like a marshmallow fireside plus apple fragrance or like marshmallow fireside with anything really uh, would be really good. I wanted like maybe a, uh, we've been talking about like a linen and vanilla blend on here a while. So like sun drenched linen plus uh, a plus like a vanilla bean fragrance. I was hoping vanilla bean would show up as one of the ones in here. Cause it seemed like they were using a lot of the core fragrances from the white barn collection, but there wasn't. Uh, I think there's just like, a whole lot of possibility for like so many mashups uh, out there. But in any case, we will talk about the one that they provided for us this time around. So the first one we have is Cinnamon Spice Vanilla and Pears Cafe, and that's what that looks like right there. Uh, this one has a plain lid on it. Uh, this one is Rich Roasted Coffee, Vanilla Creme, Ground Cinnamon, and Sugar Crystals with Natural Essential Oils. This one has the Core Wicks on it, and that's what that looks like right there. Smells exactly as you would imagine. Uh, actually, quite strong on the cinnamon spiced vanilla, which is the same thing as cinnamon, cinnamon sugar donut, which is like a churro fragrance. Uh, that's what that looks like right there, but it gets repackaged as cinnamon spiced vanilla because it's a little bit more like universal. Uh, and yeah, it's like really heaps of the cinnamon spice vanilla and the Paris Cafe sort of comes on underneath it. Uh, if you recall, Paris Cafe is a really strong powerhouse of a fragrance that like, even with the lid closed, if you like put it in your closet or a cabinet somewhere, like the entire cabinet will smell like Paris Cafe. Although the very most recent release that we've had from this collection here is not nearly as strong as all the older ones used to smell. But honestly, that's not a bad thing because a lot of times the OG Paris Cafe is so strong, it gives me a headache and like it really does like stink up your entire cabinet and house even without it lit. So I didn't mind that it was a tamer experience on this one to be honest. But this is that super bold, roasty, uh, like coffee fragrance that smells like coffee is like actively brewing. There's like a very roasty component to it, mixed with like a slight like salty brioche uh, like bakery note, uh, chilling in the background, and you get that for sure. Uh, but this version is definitely way more tame on the Paris Cafe. Like it's still in there, but I feel like the cinnamon sugar vanilla slash donut is a lot more prominent uh, for this blend. So that's kind of like what these two candles uh, will be merged into one right here. I was actually really jazzed about this because I frequently burn cinnamon sugar donut mixed with Paris Cafe at the same time to evoke like a Dunkin' Donuts experience because if you walk into a Dunkin' Donuts, you smell the donuts uh, baking as well as the uh, coffee brewing at the same time. So this is very much like a Dunkin' Donuts experience and I was like, oh my God, like I totally love that and like I used to make use that blend all the time and I finally have it in a single candle, so. Yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, I feel like, I wish the Paris Cafe was a little bit stronger, but I feel like these will probably develop a little bit more when you go to burn them, so I can't really say with confidence, just based on a cold throw, so. Yeah, uh, really heavy on the cinnamon spice vanilla and then a little bit of Paris Cafe at the end. Uh, but I think they probably had to consciously make sure the Paris Cafe was a lower ratio, because if you probably did an even 50-50 blend, I feel like Paris Cafe would probably like just overpower it like crazy. So excited to burn this one and see how that one does. The next one we have is so weird. It's a rose water and ivy and mahogany teakwood. Um, that's what that looks like. Um, and there's the 
top on this one is textured. I don't know, like I love rose water and ivy, uh, but I would never imagine to mix it with mahogany tequa. Like this is another one like vanilla bean would have been good or like even some kind of like cake fragrance to make like a rose cake fragrance. But we have pink cup tea cake, so we, I guess we don't really need that one. But this one is rich in mahogany, black teakwood, soft rose petal, rain kissed English ivy. Uh, this one has the rope like wicks and that's what that looks like right there. Oh my God, this is so, this is so strange. The mahogany teakwood is so immensely strong. I just smell Abercrombie and Fitch like all up in there. Like that's just all it really smells like. It's so strong on mahogany teakwood. And I feel like the floral components just enhance the sharpness and intensity of mahogany teakwood. That's not like a, it gives it like an extra powderiness, but it smells very mature and almost like musty. I don't know. I'm really not digging this one on cold. It's just like mahogany teak would made even more intense with like the backing of the floral and the powderiness and the sharpness of rose water and ivy. Um, and I feel like it doesn't really enhance it in a way that I would have wanted it to with like a rose fragrance. It just makes it a little bit more, I don't know, just bam. Uh, so we have mahogany teak with there and we have rose water and ivy right here from the original release and that's what that looks like. Yeah, the rose water ivy gets really buried by mahogany teak. I mean, there's definitely a floral component in here, but like the sort of fresh, powdery, perfumed component of rose water and ivy like really goes missing when it's mixed with the mahogany teak wood. And it just enhances mahogany teak wood to be even more intense and abrasive than it normally is. Yeah, this one's really interesting. I will have to uh, burn this one to see how it does, but it just smells like a mustier, more mature uh, mahogany teak wood. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, ooh, yeah, this one's definitely interesting. So Rosewater and Ivy and Mahogany Teakwood are right there. Not what I would have preferred Rosewater and Ivy to be paired with, uh, but like Mahogany Teakwood, I don't like rag on too much anymore because like Mahogany and Vanilla was such an excellent blend where the vanilla like made it more creamy and toned down the Mahogany Teakwood. Whereas Rosewater and Ivy doesn't tone down Mahogany Teakwood, it in intensifies it and makes it a little bit more abrasive. So yeah, uh, I did bring out a, could have been another Frankenstein blend fragrance is Mahogany Peach, which is Mahogany Teakwood mixed with market peach actually really strangely grew to enjoy this one very strange that trash bag peaches mixed with mahogany teakwood like if you cut like slices of peaches in the skin hit the side of the trash bag of a garbage can and then you try to cover up the stench and odor of the rotting peach with mahogany teakwood which is the a and f cologne fragrance that's what this kind of smelled like i actually kind of enjoyed it there was just enough of a contrast between the peach and the mahogany teakwood that they were so distinct whereas i don't know whereas water and ivy just gets kind of swallowed up by mahogany teakwood in this one so yeah mahogany like they could have done mah market peach and mahogany teakwood to get uh, mahogany peach again but we also have mahogany apple mahogany coconut so the mahogany blends definitely are all up in there uh so there was that we then have market peach and strawberry pound cake, which I was like, okay, that's interesting. And that's what that looks like right there. Um, that's what that looks like. This one is juicy peaches, golden shortcake, and whipped cream. So it doesn't even say strawberry in the notes, but yeah. Um, this one's quite light, actually. Uh, that's what that looks like. Uh, it's the thick rope-like wigs. It's quite light. I wish it was a little bit stronger. Um, you, It's like a peach cake fragrance. Uh, I don't mind it. If it was stronger and a little bit more, just had more oomph to it, I think it has like really good potential. But uh, you get market peach in there, but you don't get that like icky, plasticky, like trash bag peaches uh, quality to market peach because it's definitely tamed down by the like whipped cream cake, creamy fragrance of strawberry pound cake. I can't say I get a whole lot of strawberry in there. Yeah, like when I smell the OG strawberry pound cake right here, I feel like there's a prominent like strawberry jam note in this, whereas this is more so just a lot of peach with the cake notes, but it doesn't list strawberry as a note. So I don't know if strawberry is supposed to be in there or not, but it smells like a peach cake. Uh, it's pretty delicious, but it's just kind of light. So I'm just hoping this one once again develops a little bit more when you go to burn it. So that's market peach and strawberry pound cake right there. Uh, next we have champagne toast in fresh orange, and that's what that looks like. Um, and this one is bubbly champagne, sparkling berries, and fresh orange. Uh, this one has the thin core wicks on it right there. This is heaps of fresh orange, which was a fragrance that was out for a little bit, but then it doesn't come out anymore. It was another like, like speckled, like surface looking, like white wraparound 
uh, candle. I think the first year it came around and I bought it because it smells nice on cold, but when you go to burn it, it has that super astringent like, uh, like kerosene aerosol, like cleaner harshness to it that becomes really like grody and nasty when you go to burn it. I just couldn't, I think I like trashed it by the halfway point because it was just so heavy on that like aerosol kerosene grodiness that a lot of citrus fragrances tend to do. That's just how citrus fragrance always tend to react to like heat and flame. Um, and that was no exception. Uh, but I get heaps of that like effervescent tablet orange, like airborne orange type of fragrance in there. And champagne toast is in there a little bit in the back kind of makes it a little bit creamier. Um, and like that sort of like, uh, like starbursty type of like high chew kind of like candy fragrance to it. So champagne toast right here. Yeah, this one, yeah, it's like that creamy, like sort of sweet creaminess of champagne toast. That sort of starburst quality is added to fresh orange. It kind of does smell like like an orange starburst and like a uh, like a citrus starburst kind of mixed together is kind of what this smells like. Uh, has very much like a peach bellini vibe to it as well because peach bellini has a strong orange note in there as well. I feel like peach bellini is actually a little bit stronger on the orange than it is on the peach. Uh, very much peach bellini vibe. So this isn't like my favorite type of category. Just really don't care for like effervescent fruit drink fragrances. Uh, but it's just fun and interesting. That they gave us something like unique and fun, like a blends collection that I'm just like, yeah, I'll try every single one. So that's the champagne toast and fresh orange right there. And lastly, so weird, pineapple mango and fresh balsam. And that's what that looks like right here. We've actually had, there was like an alpine, some alpine fragrance that we had once before, which was supposed to be like a tree fragrance, but it smelled a lot like pineapples. A lot of times like that pineapple fragrance kind of shows up in like tree fragrances, like when there's like a sweet sappiness to it, it kind of like borrow a similar property. Uh, so woodland balsam, fir branches, fresh pineapple juice, and mango. I hate pineapple mango with a passion. It's disgusting, uh, but it comes out all the time. But when you go to burn it, it really smells like you took like old frozen frost damaged pineapple chunks out of the freezer, you put it in a bowl, and then you like spread kerosene around it, and then you nuked it in the microwave, um, and then like somehow caught on fire, and you get just that whole disgusting synthetic like old pineapple chunks with kerosene on a fire type of fragrance. Uh, it's just really not good. When you go to burn it, it has that same like synthetic like chemically grodiness that like fresh orange has, for example, that I just really don't care for, but it comes out all the time, so it must be quite popular. So yeah, I was like, I don't know how this is gonna go. Yeah, I really don't, I really don't care for pineapple mango and it's oh so strong in this. And then you get that sort of herbal crispness of fresh balsam following it. But I feel like fresh balsam just doesn't do enough to pineapple mango to redeem it, at least in my eyes. Uh, so I don't own a pineapple mango for obvious reasons, but we do have a fresh balsam right here. Um, yeah, oh my gosh, it's just so beautiful and gorgeous on its own. It's like we don't really need to tamper it unless you add like, uh, uh, what is it, vanilla to it for like vanilla balsam. Yeah, this is just so delicious and pure and awesome. And it's just kind of ruined by that grody synthetic pineapple mango. And fresh balsam is very secondary, at least to my nose. So obviously everyone's gonna interpret these blends differently because it's just like what your nose picks up first or second. But just heaps of pineapple mango with a slight, like that herbal outdoor twist that fresh balsam has. But yeah, I'm not, it's not really doing anything for me. So we'll have to see. I think you have to really enjoy pineapple mango for this, which I do not. So there was that. Uh, there was two of that one because a friend wanted that one and then one for myself. Um, and I think that's the haul. So yeah, kind of mixed bag of fragrances going on here. Excited for Pink Petal Tea Cake. Um, sunny Tropical Mango or whatever it's called was uh, a little bit better than I thought it would be. Hot Fudge Drizzles, a uh, repackage, so not too excited about that. Toasted Pineapple Marshmallows, kind of, kind of underwhelming. And the blends ones are kind of hit or miss. I'll just have to burn them to see how they develop. But I think that's pretty much it. So let me know if you're excited for Pink Petal Tea Cake. Uh, let me know if you're gonna buy it. Let me know if you're excited for any of these blends ones. I'm just really excited to like, dig in and start burning these and reviewing them. And we'll go from there. And yeah, so yes, yeah, so SAS, there's also a lot of body care coming. I did smell a lot of the home body stuff. It was just kind of take it or leave it. Uh, there's that super old collection of like poolside coconut colada, which has that amazing forever beach days if that comes out. Um, and the, the, like a blue ocean waves and citrus fragrance in that collection was Snatch too. Those were excellent. Those are like OG, like old school BBW fragrances that I really enjoyed. Um, and then 
that whole like carnival collection with the orange vanilla twist, like a cinnamon donut swirl, which sounds like it would be cinnamon sugar donut and body care, cotton candy clouds, and some other one that's escaping me right now. So there is body care to be had as well for SAS. So at least we can kind of sniff that out. But I have my fix of the candles and I really don't need to like back up or buy any more of the current stuff just because I just kind of buy one candle. I'm just kind of done with it after that. So yeah. Uh, but in case you're wondering what the other things are for semi-annual sale. Uh, Cucumber Melon, Pink Chiffon, One in a Million, Country Apple, and Sunset Glow are the fragrances that are listed for the like returning favorites. Uh, one in a Million is free and excellent, so happy to see that back, even though I still have the one from the previous one, but a candle of One in a Million would be amazing. But in any case, that's enough rambling. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, I can't wait to burn these, and we'll go from there. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.